Hey guys, it's John from Physical Living, and in this video I'm going to teach you five different hacks that you can do to improve your squat depth, to be able to squat a little bit more deeply, um, whether you want to be able to break parallel for your powerlifting style squat, or be able to get into a rock bottom, you know, deep full range of motion squat position and be able to rest comfortably here without any strain or pain. Um, if you want to improve your squat depth, I'm going to give you five different solutions for making that happen. This is not an exhaustive list, um, but this is kind of the place where I would start um, to figure out what, what the issue is. Um, so the first thing I would try, basically, regardless of who you are, um, is to experiment with your stance, specifically the width of your foot placement and the direction of your foot placement. Some people squat better with a wider stance, some people squat better with a narrower stance. Some people need their feet turned out a little bit more in, in, in order to get into that rock bottom squat position. Some people need their feet straight, and it all depends on your body type, how you're built, um, so there isn't any um, black and white rule that applies to everybody. For me, um, when I'm squatting with a, a heavy weight, like with a barbell on my back, I need a wider stance in order to maintain good technique, good structure, um, and be able to move well. But when I, when I have this wide stance, I cannot get into a full rock bottom squat comfortably. I can force it, um, but it's, it's just not uh, optimal. So when I, if I want to get into a rock bottom stance and be able to rest here, I just have to walk my feet in into this position and this is what works best for me. So might be the same thing for you. This is kind of the, the brain dead obvious first step. Um, if you can improve your squat depth just by changing your foot placement, that might be all you need to do. It might be the way to go. Um, the only things I would keep in mind are make sure that um, whatever stance you, you select, whether it's the angle of your feet or a wider stance, make sure that you can maintain a mid-foot mid balance throughout the full range of motion of the squat. You don't want too much weight on your forefoot, um, you don't want too much weight on your heels, you don't want too much weight on the outsides of your feet. Uh, you want to maintain that midfoot balance throughout the full range of motion. The other thing is you want to make sure that your knees are aligned properly and, and tracking properly over your, your ankles and feet. So you don't want your knees caving in or, or going out too far, you want them aligned properly. So keep those two things in mind when you're figuring out your stance. That's the first thing I would try, that's the first hack. Um, the second hack would be, um, this is really kind of a quick fix, is to hold some kind of weight out in front of you. So um, what this does is that it, it changes your center of gravity because it's pulling you forward and so you're able to lean back a little bit more and some people find that they're able to maintain a better posture and therefore squat uh, more deeply when they do some kind of a uh, squat like this. So this is like a one, one version of a goblet squat. Um, there's different ways to orient and hold the kettlebell. Uh, could be a dumbbell, uh, so I'll show you with a dumbbell. You just hold it like a like a goblet, and some people this is like this is like a miracle. It's like a quick fix for being able to squat more deeply. Uh, could be the same thing for you if you switch from a barbell back squat to a barbell front squat or uh, crossed arms if you have flexibility issues. Um, so just by changing your center of gravity and holding something in front of you, that might be enough to temporarily um, help you be able to squat more deeply. Uh, and you, you probably don't need much weight. I mean, even just a 10 pound dumbbell. Some people who can't even achieve a, uh, a body weight squat, a proper body weight squat, find that they can when they're holding like a 10 pound dumbbell simply because it's easier for them to maintain that posture. So kind of a quick fix, uh, but something that would be worth trying to, because uh, you're gonna learn something from it. You're gonna learn about yourself and what you need. So third um, hack would be elevating your heels on some kind of a block. You can use a piece of wood. Um, you want to look for something that's about a half inch to an inch off the ground. And what this, what this does is it kind of takes your ankle mobility and flexibility out of the equation. Um, so like uh, kind of people that I would recommend uh, to try this first would be if you squat and you find that your heels have a tendency to come off the ground, especially when you start to get deep or you start to lean forward more, um, then by blocking underneath your heels, kind of take that out of the equation, you might find that, well, hey, I can get into a much deeper squat, maintain my posture better, um, just from that alone. So that would teach you something about yourself, not something I necessarily recommend doing over the long term, uh, but it is kind of a short term quick fix hack, um, if you will. And something I just thought of um, is that a lot of athletic footwear has an elevated heel, so your heels are a little bit higher than your, your forefoot, and that in and of itself might make it easier for you to squat in those shoes. However, I still think it's a good idea for 
everybody, basically everybody, um, to try and work up to a full range of motion rock bottom squat with your feet flat. And so that's why I'm an advocate for training barefoot or in uh, minimalist footwear, um, especially when there's uh, zero, um, zero heel lift. You don't want your heels to be elevated because um, that's going to change things. I won't get into it uh, all here, but you know, that's just something to think about. Um, so those are the first three hacks, uh, if you will. Those are really kind of quick fixes. The last two are going to be some joint mobility exercises and some flexibility exercises. And these are kind of going to be a uh, diagnostic tool as a starting point for further experimentation. Uh, these are not an all-inclusive, exhaustive list um, of exercises that you can do to improve your squat depth. Uh, but they are a starting point. And so if you find what I'm going to recommend you do is that um, uh, perform a, a squat test, test, see how low you can get before you try these mobility exercises and you find, okay, I can get about here before my, my technique falls apart. Then you go through the mobility exercises or the flexibility exercises and you test again and you're like, hey, I can get a little bit deeper than I did before. If that happens, then you probably want to look more into joint mobility training or flexibility training, yoga, PNF stretching. Um, whatever, there's a lot of different modalities for it, but it, it's going to tell you something, it's going to teach you something about it, and, and that's going to give you the kind of the feedback, the information that you need to explore more, and okay, I'm, I'm actually going to start taking this joint mobility training seriously, because I see a positive result immediately after doing this for a minute or two. So, fourth hack, real quick, it won't be real quick, um, but the joint mobility exercises, I'm going to have you start with just a basic um, shoulder retraction. So you're going to pinch your shoulder blades together behind you. Imagine that you have a pencil in between them and try and break that pencil. Try and squeeze it, squeeze them together. You can combine this with a shoulder shrug circle and go both directions. Um, with all these mobility exercises, you can do three to five reps, ten reps, up to a minute. Um, up to you. The more, the more time you spend on it, the more likely you're going to see if it works or not. Um, so that's the first exercise. Second exercise is going to be a thoracic spine, your upper spine, expansion and extension. So what you're going to do is you're going to anchor, anchor your palms on your thighs, and without letting your hips move, you're going to lift your chest uh, forward and up at, at an angle. You can imagine a cable attached to your sternum, your rib cage, and pulling your rib cage uh, forward without your hips moving. So what you're going to do is inhale, extend your sternum up and forwards, and you're going to exhale and relax. Inhale up, don't let your hips move. Anchor, press into your, press into your thighs, and relax. Show you from the side. And you can do that for three to five reps, 10 reps, um, whatever you have time for. Um, next exercise is gonna be a, just a standing hip extension. Um, so you're gonna get a shoulder width or wider stance. You're gonna anchor your, your hands on your, your waist here and just gonna press your hips forward, squeezing your glutes, squeezing your thighs, locking your knees. You're going to press forward as hard as you can, pushing with your hands, and you're going to hold for a moment, and then you're going to kind of rock back and forth a little bit, just to open up your hip flexors a little bit. Um, you could do a full range of motion circle, which would absolutely be beneficial too, um, in both directions. Um, but for this diagnostic test, we're just going to kind of rock the, the hips back and forth a little bit. That's the third mobility exercise. Fourth mobility exercise is going to be a partial squat with external rotation of the hips. So what I want you to do is squat down as far as you can with good technique. If that's right here, that's okay. Um, if it's here, great, but find, find your depth. And then uh, anchor, or not anchor, but press one, uh, press your palm onto the inside of your knee to externally rotate your hip out to the outside. And if you're at this kind of quarter squat depth, you might need to use your palm like so, if you get a little bit deeper, you might need to use your elbow to press on that. Um, you can do two at once. You can press on it, kind of this prayer squat position. Um, and what you want to do is just kind of experiment with the, with the range of motion, um, figure out where your restrictions are. Um, but you want to be able to externally rotate those hips in this squat position. You might get into the squat position and realize, hey, if I change my stance a little bit, I'm able to get a little bit deeper in that range of motion, or this is a little bit easier for me. So, you know, play around with it and uh, figure out what works for you. The last mobility exercise is just a really basic ankle flexion. So you're going to stand on one, one foot, hold on to something if you need to. You're going to point your toes and then uh, pull your toes back towards your shin. That's the most important part is this ankle flexion. Um, you can do the same thing with your, your knee raised and bent like this, uh, but you're basically going to point the toes, flex it back, and really focus on that flexing motion because that's what happens 
you take this and put it here, that's what happens when you squat. The ankle is in a flexed position. Um, so those are the five mobility exercises that I would start with. That's the fourth hack. The fifth hack is the um, flexibility exercises. So it might not be a joint mobility issue, it might be more of a muscle flexibility issue that's preventing you from uh, deep squatting. So I'm gonna give you five different um, poses or stretches, if you will, to diagnose that. Um, first is just gonna be a standing, clasped hands, um, shoulder retraction. So what you're gonna do is stand up straight, uh, clasp your hands behind your, and release your fingers, and you're gonna pinch your shoulder blades together like we were before, and then this time we're gonna lock the elbow and drive the hands and the shoulders down um, towards the floor. So you have, if you have this pistol made, you're gonna point the pistol down towards the floor, making sure to squeeze your shoulder blades together and to keep the elbows locked with a strong tricep contraction, and then pull all of that structure down and hold that for 20 to 30 seconds, maybe up to a minute. Um, you can do that 20, 30 seconds up to a minute for each of these exercises. Um, so the next exercise will be the uh, shoulder bridge. So you're going to lay on your back, feet flat on the ground with uh, your knees bent, um, and you're going to pinch your shoulder blades together. You can either have your hands um, flat on the ground or at your sides or underneath you. Um, best case scenario would be doing that same thing we did before, clasping your hands together, pinching your shoulder blades, make sure, you know, the main thing to think about here is making sure that there's no weight on your neck. So you want to pinch those shoulder blades together. And what you're going to do is you're going to exhale and press your feet into the ground to extend your hips upwards, squeezing your glutes and pressing. And then you're going to inhale and open up your rib cage. Let your, let your ribs in your, uh, your chest expand. So you're going to exhale and press your feet into the ground, squeeze your glutes, let your hips come higher and higher, and then you're going to inhale and let your uh, chest expand. And you're going to repeat that for 20, 30 seconds up to a minute, you know the drill. Um, so the third flexibility uh, exercise is going to be a kneeling hip flexor stretch, just a real basic one. So what you're going to do is get into this uh, single leg kneeling position, one knee on the floor behind you. And it's a very subtle range of motion. All you're going to do is uh, tuck your tailbone underneath you. So it's a posterior pelvic tilt. If you imagine your pelvis at like a bowl full of water, you want to drip uh, or pour the water out the back of your bowl. And so it's a subtle range of motion, but you want to tuck your tailbone underneath, and that might be all you need to feel a stretch on the front of your hip. It might be really tight. Um, and so, but if you're not feeling much um, activity, um, what you can do is you can tuck your tailbone underneath, maintain that tucked tailbone, and then lean forward slightly, and you should feel it even deeper into your hip flexor, which is the muscle just above your, your uh, thigh or your quad. Um, obviously, you want to do both sides uh, when you're doing that. Um, the next exercise is the uh, camel. So from a tall kneeling position with your um, top of feet resting on the floor, you're going to lean back and put your hands on top of your heels, and then you're going to um, lock your elbows, stabilize your shoulders on your torso, squeeze your glutes to extend your hips, you're going to feel a stretch um, all throughout your thighs, your hip flexors, um, your abs, your chest, your shoulders, and you're going to, same as, uh, same as with the shoulder bridge before, you're going to exhale, squeeze the glutes, press the hips forward, and then inhale, trying to expand the chest. Um, so repeat that for 20, 30 seconds up to a minute. Um, the last um, flexibility exercise is going to be a variation of down dog, not a true traditional down dog, because we're going to be using it to um, uh, increase the flexibility of the ankle. So you're going to get into this hands and feet position, and whatever you have to do to get your heels flat on the ground, make it happen. Um, so if you have to walk your feet a little bit wider, um, that's okay to get your heels flat. If you can keep them narrower, which will be a little bit harder, uh, great. So what you're going to do is press with your hands to, to lower your, your heels to the ground. You can play around with your, your hand positioning. Once you're here, try and lock your, your knees, press your uh, knee pits back behind you, and keep those heels on the ground. You can also do one, one leg at a time uh, if you want, really focus on it. You can raise one leg off the ground, you can lift it up really high. Um, main thing is you want to um, get a little bit deeper into that ankle flexion uh, range of motion and uh, stretch out the calf musculature. So. That is the last uh, flexibility exercise. Like I said before, the, the mobility and flexibility exercises are kind of a diagnostic tool to see if this is something that you need or you would 
would benefit from. Most people uh, would benefit from mobility and flexibility work, and most people neglect it um, to their peril. Um, and so this is kind of a starting point. If you find um, that you get good results from it, definitely dive in and, and explore those different modalities. It'll do you, your body a lot of good. Um, so anyways, I guess that's a wrap. These are, those are the five hacks for improving your squat depth. I've got more information on improving your squat depth. I've got another video upcoming soon on uh, more of a longer term approach um, to improving your squat depth. So if that's something that interests you, please subscribe to my channel or my blog or my newsletter, however you'd like to follow my work. Um, and I guess that's about it. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your time, especially for a longer video like this. I hope it was helpful for you and I will see you next time. Take care.